Hi everyone, welcome back to another tech talk in our channel. And I wanted to talk to you about my camera that I use for, I usually use for sit down videos. I am currently filming on my DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Um, but when I do sit down videos, I am usually filming with my Canon M6 Mark II. Now, I have had this camera since it came out. Before this, I had the Mark VI, ah, sorry, the M6 Mark I, the first version of this. And I loved that camera. There was nothing wrong with it. But when this came out, and it came out with 4K video uncropped on 30 frames per second, mm, that, was, that was the deal. So when I do film with this camera, I use it on 4K, but I use it on 24P. And I film with this. Now, sorry, excuse me if you're hearing some kind of whirring sound in the background. My fan is on because it is scorching here in Australia at the moment. Yes, we have our summer at Christmas time, hence the Christmas tree in the background as well. Um, but anyways, let's go back to this camera. 32 megapixels. Um, if you're a pixel peeper, you probably like that information. Um, at the time when it came out, it, is, it was the camera that had the highest resolution. Um, now I think Fujifilm's X-T5 has 40 megapixels. Um, I like this for both photography and videography, but mainly I bought it for videography, and I really like it for vlogging, actually. Um, now, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like the screen because it flips up or it tilts down and stuff like that. I actually really like it for vlogging with, um, with a screen up so I can see myself. And it doesn't have that awkward look where I am looking at like the side, like I'm always distracted because I'm looking at myself on the flip out side um, screen. So I really like this. Plus, People will tell you, oh, you no, know, when you put the cat, when you put the microphone on this hot shoe, um, it doesn't, you know, the, the screen doesn't come up. Well, I don't really use a microphone on the hot shoe because I use a wireless microphone. And nowadays, that's the thing. Um, I used to have like the uh, Rode video mic i can't remember i think it's, it's it's the really small one that goes on the top that's what i used to have and i had to get an l bracket to get that on but to be honest with you with that as well when you have a, a shotgun microphone on top when you are filming pov and the camera is looking at exactly where you're going unless you flip that microphone um, that's on the top the sound that when you're speaking is not going to be that great So that's why I prefer to actually have a level gear mic on me Because whichever direction I point the camera the audio will be the same So that's a hot tip for you guys if that's that's a problem that you're thinking about unless you already have that shotgun Microphone um, and you don't want to buy a new one, but my boy one is like a hundred Twenty dollars, I think, and it comes with so many things. I've got, I've got, I've got a video on just this microphone set here. Um, yeah, but then you, you could also get. There are plenty other ones that are cheaper on the market, but yeah, that's not a problem for me. Now, um, yeah, so it actually looks better when I'm looking at myself on camera and on the screen. It doesn't look awkward, um, and it's. Pretty much the same setup as I have here with the Osmo Pocket where in the actual camera is on top of the screen, right? And I'm using my Boya um, mic to go ahead and film with this audio. Now, I'm going to link all of this stuff in the description bar if you're interested, okay? Um, just bear in mind that my Amazon links are probably in Australia, but you'll, I'm sure you'll find it in America as well and wherever else you're coming from. Anyways, I've got the pancake lens on here, which is a 22 millimeter um, 2.0. Love this for walking around. It's very inobtrusive. Um, 
you can do street photography with this. I think my only gripe with this is that the depth of the grip isn't very much. So it kind of doesn't feel as secure when you're holding it. And I already have small hands. I can, I can only imagine how much more difficult it is for people with bigger hands. But yeah, this is like very inobtrusive. You can take pictures. It's got really good... Um, and I've got a good amount of lenses that I use with this. So one is this pancake lens. When I bought the first version, the Mark One of this, it came with a 15 to 45 mm, which was a good kit lens. Don't get me wrong. I just never really used it. So I, when I sold the Mark One, I sold it with a kit lens. And I only actually bought this camera with the uh with just the body and the viewfinder uh i did buy it with a viewfinder uh, if i can find it i will show out oh, here uh, i did buy it with a viewfinder but honestly i don't really use it i kind of regret even buying this because obviously this was um, an additional cost to it but it actually cost less to buy it with a camera than to buy it separately if you ended up thinking that you needed it. I haven't really used it much because I still look at the big old three inch screen when I'm taking photographs because it just makes it look very inconspicuous as if you were like looking at the settings or you were fixing something up when really you're you're taking a picture, right? So if you if you are into street photography and I am a little bit more into that and into um, macro photography, that actually works well. And in the same vein as when I do landscape photography, which is the other genre that I really prefer, um, I don't really look into the viewfinder unless uh, it's really bright and I can't see the screen very well. That would be the only time that I would use this. And honestly, it's worked fine without the viewfinder. So if that's something that you're considering, in my opinion, it's not necessary. Unless you're coming from the traditional um, uh, DSLRs where you have to go into the viewfinder to take pictures, then yeah, sure. Um, at first, it did take a little bit of getting used to for me to be able to take a picture without putting the camera against my eye because there is no viewfinder there. But once you get used to it, and I've had this again since it came out in 2019, so that's about four years now. Um, so I have the pancake lens here. This is a 22mm 2 uh, yeah, 2.0, uh, and it's really great for that. The other lenses that I have, because I do like my landscape photography, is this um, 11 to 22. Um, this also does macro, but this is not what I use for my macro photography. I did initially buy the 28mm, uh, I think it was 3.5, that they were selling that had the lights there for macro photography but because i like to take pictures of insects i can't really go too close to them um they just fly away when when i do so i sold that and then in place of that i actually bought the this is a third party one this is lawa i think it's called it is a manual um manual macro lens it's from it's a 60 yeah it's a 60 m sorry 65 mm f 2.8 um and it has two times magnification so that's why i really like this this is manual focus though so you have to really get used to that um it is great, especially for macro photography of inanimate objects, but when you are following around a bee, um, it can get a little bit difficult. So when that is what I am after, I have another third party camera. This is the Sigma 105mm 2.8, and I have the Canon adapter as well. So I bought the Canon adapter thinking that I was going to get more EF or EFS lenses, but I only really ended up getting the Sigma. This is quite hefty, um, so it actually helps that the um, there is a, what do you call this thing? <laughs> a mount. 
<laughs> there is a lens mount on this one, but this can, this lens mount can actually be detached. You can, you can take it off if you wanted to. Um, but I keep it on there because this lens is quite heavy. And with the small body of the M6, I just don't want it to um, have too much pressure on the lens mount of the camera. So I just keep it on there um, and use it when I prop it on a tripod and use, I use that. So really, really great third party. And I also use this for street photography because it's got that good reach and that very nice wide aperture that it really um, brings out the subject against its background. So this is, I find this really, really good. And it's obviously also a fraction of the Canon version. I was thinking of the Canon version, but the 100mm 2.8 is just like ridiculously priced. And I wasn't going to go for that because I wasn't sure at the time how much macro photography I was going to do. I do prefer doing macro. So I and so investing into macro um, lenses is really good. Lawa is actually really good. Um, I do recommend it if you are okay with manual focusing because this one is, is a really great glass and it's also not that expensive. Okay. The other lens that I have, which um, I like for portraiture and for, um, what else do I use this for? For, for street photography as well, if, if I want to be a little bit more inconspicuous because obviously the Sigma one is giant. Um, this is the 32mm f1.4 by Canon. This is a, an M mount native, so there is no need for an adapter for this. Obviously, you can get a few other um, lenses with, with the use of an adapter, but if I got the M mount just to go straight onto the camera, um, it makes it less bulky. It also just works, right? And the last lens that I have is... 55 to 200 and if I want to take a picture of the full moon um, or whatever is happening that is quite far that I don't need a very wide aperture for this is the guy so this is 55 to 200 and it is uh, 5.6 to 6.3 if I'm not mistaken but let's have a look at that yeah sorry it's 4.5 to 6.3 and it's, these are all STM lenses. They're very quiet. Um, it does not distract when you're taking pictures or videos. And I really like that this guy here is very, very uh, good telephoto, very good glass. Even though it's tiny, it really does do a great job. So I really like that. I also like to use this on street photography if I want to be a little bit more far away from the subject and them not detecting that I am actually taking a photo of them. Yeah, so there. Um, that That is really the um, setup that I have, all the lenses that I have for my Mark, uh, for my M6 Mark II. I do think it is still a good buy. I know Elephant in the Room I know that Canon has discontinued creating the M series. I don't know why. I think they're focusing on their R series, which are more, well, there are APS-C, but there are also full frame versions of those. Um, but I didn't want to go back to that because I really like how compact this camera is. Um, I am getting a, what do you call this? A grip from small rig for this, um, just to have a deeper, grip on this and be a little bit more secure. I did also order a shoulder strap to go with this so that I can sling it cross body against me, make it easier for me to just grab it instead of it being in front of me all the time and bobbing when I am walking. Um, so yeah, those are two additional accessories that I am trying to get. I do have ND filters that are applicable to all of my lenses and they are applicable because I have step up rings. I'll show you what that is. Okay, so these are step up rings. So you can actually take take them apart. Each one is a different size. So if I was using, because my ND filters are one size, they are all 55 uh, millimeter threads. 
but not all of my lenses have that same thread. Like for instance, um, this 11 to 22 is 55 and that's why I bought the 55 because I would use the ND filter the most with my landscape um, wide lens. But I can adapt those ND filters with a 43mm using step up rings. With a 52mm using step up rings. With a 43mm using step up rings. So um, these are actually really handy. I have them in a 30 to 26, 37 to 30, 43 to 37, so on and so forth, up to a maximum of 82 millimeter. Yeah. So those are really handy accessories that you can get for you to be able to do more with your camera. And the reason I created this video is because I was actually really tempted to buy a new camera thinking that, you know, my camera is outdated. They're not making new things for it anymore, you know. But it works fine. There's no problem with it. It does the job. It's got 32 megapixels, you, you know. It's got 4K uncropped. So why spend that money when I've already invested in so many lenses and it works fine. So this is me falling in love again with my Canon M6 Mark II.